I'm, I'm Mark Rozart. I'm Kevin McCauley. Uh, welcome, welcome to these uh, webinars. It's the fourth one of the series. Just a few notes on this. Um, when it comes to webinars showing future products, uh, just bear in mind that they're not always available or licensed for sale in all markets. Um, so we'll let you know when these become available for our market here. Mark? Uh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'd like to welcome Ralph and Casper, and uh, please and enjoy the the lecture. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we are happy to be back here with our fourth webinar today. We're going to be talking about the EOS Accurate Hybrid Basis, the Hexalobulus Screw, and uh, applying the right torque. My name is Casper. I'm the Global Product Manager here at ELOS. And today with me, I have, of course, Ralph, my good colleague. Welcome, Ralph. Yeah, thank you, Casper, for the nice introduction. Uh, my name is Ralph. Um, I'm a dental master technician working as a senior manager sales for Germany, but also have a more technical role as a support manager. Uh, so my role is more hybrid. So thank you and welcome to the webinar. Yeah, let's get started. Here we have the agenda for today's webinar. Uh, you'll be talking a little bit about correct indications, then we'll go into the mating surface, which is like the essential part of a tie base uh, restoration. We're going to talk about the, the hybrid bases on our hexalobal screws. We're going to talk about torque application uh, and best practice for that. And then we got a little surprise because we got the Gen 4 sneak peek of our new hybrid base, and we are eager to share that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a little bit about bonding when it comes to to hybrid bases or type bases. We got uh, some do's and don'ts that we're going to run through. Uh, and then, of course, we have our tips and tricks where you have been looking at some really nice features. We will start a little bit about bonding. Uh, and then you have some some cool new things from, from Exocap. Yes, for the, from the new Alessina uh, version now. Yeah, yeah. the regulations. Yes. Uh, and then we're talking a little bit about CAM offsets. Right. That's yeah. very interesting, I think, from a technical perspective, that you are able to manipulate a little bit your fitting and uh, fitting fit. to your process chain in your lab. Great. But uh, let's get started. Okay, so very basically, we're talking about the indication, always when you supply any implant case, um, and for sure, the abutment selection is crucial for the proper function of an implant and also your prosthetic reconstruction. Yeah. It also should ideally ensure that the forces exerted on the implant are evenly distributed, meaning reducing the risk of implant failure or complications or incorrect loading. Yeah. And when we talk about hybrid base and the very from a usability side, I would say you have the pros and you have the cons. Mm. Yeah. So the pros for sure today with these very nice looking, very natural looking um, uh, zirconia materials, multi-layer materials, you are able to design an abutment, which is originally your, your final anatomical shape. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this is a big advantage also when we talk about light transmission from the tooth into the gum to make it looking healthy and all that. So that's very important and for sure. And this also enables us to make a hybrid base abutment as a one piece oh, because yeah. the abutment is already the anatomical shape. So that's quite different to having a titanium abutment and on top of it, okay. a separate chrome. Oh, yeah. yeah. But talking about the pain points are for example, when you have less space, uh, especially in the lower jaw, then you are struggling with, with wall thicknesses. You have the minimum wall thickness of the titanium base. This is given. Mm -hmm. Then you have the cement gap, which is predefined. Then you have your minimum wall thickness of your material, which is around 0 0.6 with zirconia, maybe a one millimeter with, with glass ceramic. So you are losing a lot of space. Yeah, so yeah, if it's a very narrow gap, you get a lot of limitations. The other point is, and that's maybe the biggest pain point with hybrid base in the frontal tooth area, that the oh. implant follows the bone orientation, meaning your hyper base on top of it follow the implant axis, yeah. which collides with your mock-up of the later tooth. Yeah, so uh, usually the, the the chimney direction is not favorable. No, no. Right. And this is the aesthetic zone, so you really want to have a really nice. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, but what, what interesting! I'm learning a lot. <laughs> so, but very basic, we can say there are three aspects or parameters for the correct indication, and one of that is for sure the periodontal. Yeah, yeah. and so you need sufficient cleaning options and optimal emergence profile to support the gum, but. I think we have a lot of discussion about uh, subgingival cement yes. gap, uh, bacteria colonization, and all that, which is solved by mm. different gingivides. We will introduce for the new Gen 4 hybrid base later. Then we have the functional uh, topics, which is more about stability, yeah, and also to get the correct uh, load of the bite forces to the implant axis and all that. And then we have the aesthetical point. And yeah. I think, especially in the frontal tooth area, we talk yeah. about aesthetic. And when we talk about aesthetic, it's often that you can make a very perfect drone, a complete perfect copy of the navel tooth, yeah. and you put it in a patient's mouth and it fails. And that's because of a missing pink-white aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And for sure, pink-white aesthetics has a lot to do with, with the gum management before you start your prosthetic construction. But if it's made perfect, if it's prepared in a per perfect way, then the abutment should ideally support the emergence profile. It should close the interdental spaces. It should ensure gum thickness. It should preserve the papilla morphology and all that. There's a lot of things to consider, actually. Right. OK, but uh, let's go into so what what is it actually that defines like a hybrid base uh, restoration um, and, and the important factors of this? Yeah, so let, let's have a look into the library. Yeah, you see in the library you have the digital twin of the physical parts like the scan mode, the hybrid base, the implant, the screw and all that. But the most important part is not a physical part in the library, oh. <laughs> it's the mating surface. And Which mate, is the transition from the tie base into the actual restoration. Yes, right. The yeah. mating surface generates your cavity in your later abutment. And yeah. this is crucial for milling. And when we see here uh, on, the, on the screen, you see this red colored mating surface or ma mating geometry. And when we zoom in, we see this, this radia we have on mm. that. And this is a trill compensation because usually the smallest tool for mill the cavity in the standard strategies is one millimeter. Yeah. So if you fall below that, you have received a material after milling. So that's why the mating surface is so important for milling. Yeah. yeah so it's is... not a one-to-one -one copy of the hybrid base. No, it needs to be defined so after milling it fits. Yes, right. Yeah. Right. So that's a very the most interesting part in the library for us. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And when we talk about the mating surface, um, I think it's important to to highlight one of the features that we actually build into the library here and the mating surface. And then what's interesting when we talk about digital libraries is that we can actually do a lot of improvement, not only on the fiscal part, but we can actually do it in the library. Uh, and what we have in, in, in what we call the mating surfaces uh, is this tripod feature which is highlighted here with these red circles uh, on the cross section uh, of the hybrid base and the mating surface you see on your on your left. So these tripods are actually small distances that is there to ensure that there is a, a the hybrid base is centered mm -hmm. inside the mating surface uh, and it also uh, ensures that you have enough cement gap. And, and we'll come a little into that when we talk about the bonding. Right. Um, but, but here we are sure that we actually have the evenly distributed cement around the entire hybrid base and that it's centered inside the actual mill restoration. Right, and so the, you can say the cement gap is already predefined yes. in the library. And the pain point sometimes is you cannot change it in nope. your cat. It's not like a tooth where you can define your own cement gap. Yeah. Yeah. It's already predefined. And for sure, we have so many different materials. We have mm. different zirconia, different sintering factors, uh, different sintering ovens, yeah. different strategies to mill, different tools. So we defined a cement gap, which is very generic, very so, but it probably needs to be adjusted. And we will show you later in the tips and tricks section how you can adjust it, even if it's not possible in your CAD software. Exactly. 
and that's a really good point and we'll get back to that and, and another interesting point is of course the actual milling of the, the mating surface yes so you can see this is the smallest tool that it exactly grind out all the residual material because of this drill compensation we mentioned mm -hmm. before yeah. and uh, this is now a simul Ten years of five axis process, but you can also mill it three axis. Yeah, and that's why the actual design of, of the hybrid bases and the chimney uh, is actually quite interesting because even though it looks to be very very straight, we actually have a small taper on it. We have a one degree taper, and that also means that the mating surface that we are milling also is a little tapered, and that ensures if you are doing a three axis milling that you'll not have a situation where the tool will kind of drag up against the side and actually mm -hmm. ruin the very nice and accurate uh, cavity that you're milling. So that's an extra built-in like. Yeah, so you have no collision with the shaft or something, mm -hmm. no chipping at the at the edge or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's so, good. so again, the mating surface is indeed an essential part yeah. of the bottom library. Absolutely. OK, and that's great. So. So here we will actually go in and talk a little bit about the, the EOS hybrid bases. So this is the, the current lineup. We already talked a little bit about sneak peek. We will show later, but this is the current li uh, lineup of the EOS hybrid bases. Uh, so we're going to just talk a little bit about the, the engaging uh, version of the hybrid base, uh, where we have uh, from, the, from the previous version, we have a higher chimney, but we also have a, uh, another and, and larger locking area mm -hmm. uh, and the locking area here actually um, it actually again kind of adds up to a tripod feature where we have a locking area from the use shape uh, together with the locking area on top um, that again creates a stable uh, and, and really nice indication when you insert the uh, the hybrid base into your restoration so it's of course it's a one-way insertion but it's easy to find and it's also quite stable um, and easy to mill as we just discussed yes and from i, I always have this user perspective a little yeah. bit as a dental te technician and i want also to highlight that we have the locking area at the top yeah. of the chimney because usually and often some computers they have the locking geometry at the bottom yeah yeah and especially if you have very small diameters you have a at the end a very small you have a cam or something at the bottom mm. and you have a very small edge of your zirconia abutment to be milled yeah that means well, you have a, a risk of chipping and from my experience if the edge w thickness falls down under 0 0.2 millimeter you have a higher risk of chipping yeah. and also if you have very small gaps in this area if the locking geometry is at the bottom you are falling below your minimum exactly. wall thickness of the recommended material like zirconia it's probably 0 0.6 0 0.8 you fall down on it because you have this bulb yeah uh, 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 yeah, it is yeah. in the uh, zirconia construction yeah so that is a good it's a really good point well uh, and and here i just wanted to just give a quick like highlight or benchmark up against the different mm -hmm. versions that we have. We have a, a shorter chimney and we have a tall chimney. And, and what's important for for all our hybrid bases, and we will discuss that later when we talk about the bonding, is basically the retention helixes. Mm -hmm. And we have this built-in mechanical retention uh, on the on the chimney. Uh, of course, we have our our angulation, uh, the U shape that allows for the angulation up to 20 degrees for the hexalobular. We'll also come into that, uh, and then we have our uh, our cement space, as we talked about with the mating surface, that kind right. of fades out to zero, so meaning mm -hmm. that we have the cement space around the chimney, um, but not at where it kind of merges with the uh, with the height. So we keep the cement gap as small as possible. Exactly. So yeah. 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 Okay. And if we take a click quick glance at the non-engaging version. This is where we have the small antennas on top. Uh, in what we call the H line, uh, we have our, our guide grip, as, as we call them, uh, embedded into the, the chimney. So it actually also increases our uh, cementation surface area. And, yes. and adds to the mechanical tension as well. Um, but the guide grip features is a really nice feature that I really like, the, the fact that it can actually be held into the restoration. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a really fan of that. I'm, also, I'm as good. a dental technician, again, <laughs> it's um, usually it's pretty annoying when you when you are doing a, a bridge construction of two or more implants, especially in the upper jaw. Mm. It always falls down yeah. in the articulator if you if you oh. uh, uh, 
check the, the bite, the occlusion, uh, the aesthetics, it always falls down because it's not bonded. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you doing? You are putting Vaseline in it or whatever <laughs> paste, putting in it to stick it on your model that it doesn't fall down. You yeah. can imagine if you're veneering it or stain oh, it yeah, yeah. and it falls down, everything is gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm a really fan of that. And it's also not good if you go with the Vaseline in your ceramic oven for your heating elements and all oh, that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's pretty nice. So you have this spring feature somewhere. It's kind of like a preload spring um, yes. that just fits into the, uh, again, the mating surface. Yes, and the same in the dental office, yeah. you When you have a bigger reconstruction on implants, you want to make try-ins mm. before okay. you finalize it yeah. to check the aesthetics, to check the, the functional uh, aspects and all that. And this also allows you to make easy try-ins in the patient, yeah. yeah. Usually you have these try and paste or also using Vaseline mm -hmm. uh, for that to make it sticky, yeah. But on the other side, now you just put it on the hybrid base and it clamps. Yeah. So it's fixed also in the patient's mouth without cluing. That's a pretty nice feature. It is, it is. And if you look at, at again, the non-engaging, uh, like a little benchmark, again, the retention helix is, is a really nice feature. It really adds to your surface area and it builds the mechanical retention. Again, the U-shaped triangulation um, that we already talked about. And when we talk about, of course, when we talk about implant uh, support reservations, the regulatory aspects of it is, of course, extremely yeah. important. And this is something that we also take very, uh, very serious. And of course, we have all the uh, the uh, regulatory approval in all our uh, all our main markets. Um, but I think now we're going to talk a little bit about the screw. Yeah, and that's very interesting because when we look into the, the yeah, let's fade in into the hybrid base or making a section view, we can see that we have a screw head support yeah. for that. Yeah, and it's red marked. If you go ahead, you oh, see yeah. that's a, the red marked area here. And this is exactly fitting to the screw head. So the screw head support in your hyper base should be the same as the screw, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, and the, uh, the ELO screws always follows the original screw head geometry, but also the coating. Yes. is following the original coding yes. of the implant manufacturers. And when we look into the next sheet, um, we see a same, the same picture. This is, an, uh, I think, a Noble Active yeah, it looks like uh, a CC, yeah. hybrid base, a CC, right? And also here, if you go ahead, you see these red marked uh, areas. Yeah. So you have the screw head layer and you see the ELO screw on the left. Also, the Noble Biker original screw has the yeah. same screw head geometry. Yeah. And when we look on the right, we have competitor mm. uh, screws for the same system. Yeah. And they have a flat surface. Okay. So some competitors, they change the geometry for, for whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. But, but then the, the reservation that the mountains will also have a flat seating. Yes, you can argue like yeah. that. But at the end, we imagine maybe five years later, the patient goes to the dentist, maybe he, the patient changed the dentist, yeah. has a screw loosening, screw break, or just having a checkup yeah. Yeah, for cleaning, whatever. The, the dentist doesn't really know, is that a hybrid base from Ehlers, is it from competitor, competitor or, or whatever. Or, yeah. So what it, does right. the dentist do? He orders the original screw yeah. because he probably see, okay, it's a noble active system. I go to noble and order the the uh, correct screw, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then it won't fit. Yeah, it's about patient safety. Yes. Yeah, and you can imagine if you merge a flat screw head with a conical mm. internal uh, support. Yeah, but you don't get the right torque. You don't get the right friction transmitted. Yes, you have something like a cold welding. Yeah. That's not the idea of no. a screw, right? Okay, that's that's actually quite interesting, and 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 again, uh, just to highlight, as you said, well, well, the ELA screw will always follow the manufacturer in coding and in shape. Yes, uh, meaning yeah. that if you then exchange the ELA screw later on uh, in, in your scenario and you mount a uh, novel screw, everything will fit. Right. Okay. Right. That's a really good point. Uh, and, and talking about the screws and the ELA screws, um, we, we of course have what we call the prosthetic screw. 
mm -hmm. and our Hexa Lubos group. Uh, and that means that you can actually choose between the two. The Postegas screw is, again, it's uh, designed as the original screw, and it also has the screw driver interface of the manufacturer. Right. Um, and it can be used for a straight screw channel. But the uh, Elas Accurate he Hexalobular screw uh, is the screw for ankylations. This is the hexalobular design that we'll come into a little more, um, but this allows for angulation uh, of the screw channel. Right, and you probably can argue, okay, I don't know exactly at the beginning what screw I need. Both yeah, the case, is yeah. it the straight screw channel or is it the angulated one? Yeah. yeah, you can say, okay, to be safe, I just use the hexalobular screw, mm -hmm. but then you, it's not compatible to the original screwdriver yeah. because it's always a Torx a geometry. Yeah. So, but the nice thing with CAD CAM is you can make your design before you order the hybrid base or the order the right screw. Yeah. So you can figure out where the best solution, yeah. what is the best solution here, and then you can order the right screw. So always keep in mind to buy the screw that suits your case. That's Absolutely. important. Absolutely. So uh, the next topic that we'll go into is uh, actually about torque wrenches um, and the torque applied. And I actually, I went to, this is a short video. I just went into production and just took a, play, a video of a part of the production of the, uh, of the Eagles torque wrench. Uh, and it just, it was basically just to show that it's, it's actually a complicated product. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of reliance on this product that it actually performs yeah. and it performs the same every every time. So here is just a short video of some of the the, the processes that our talk wrench goes through uh, to ensure that we actually get the right talk. Okay, so we put a lot of efforts in, in production uh, for this talk wrench. And I think the talk wrench is somewhere it's a it's a measurement device. Yeah. And it should be handled, should be produced like a measurement device. Yes. And uh, the quality of the torque for sure is very important to apply the right torque mm -hmm. later on your screw. Yeah. And what happens when you applying torque on a screw? Uh, initially, you have a pretension which occurs during screwing. Yeah. yeah. So this ensures a very stable connection between the abutment and the implant. And if the and the, the pretension depends on the force on the torque yeah. you're applying on it, and when tightening a screw, it causes always a slight elastic elongation of the screw. Yeah, so you're actually stretching the screw. To right, the right. It's very minimal, yeah. but you're scratching yeah. the screw. This is how the screw in general works. Yeah. Yeah. And this torque depends on material, the, the quality of the fits mm -hmm. between screw and the screw head layer support, uh, but also the ge geometry. Yeah, so that's the reason why we have different torques for different screws. Yeah. Because you have different thread diameters, different screw head diameters, and all that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So overall, we can say the recommended torque is very crucial for the friction locking and the gap-free connection between abutment and implant. Ah. So if the torque is too high, yeah, for sure there's a Something will break. Yeah, you experience from home when you screw something too hard, then, yeah, yeah. then it breaks. So it's very easy yeah. to understand, I think. Uh, but if the torque is too weak, there's also a screw, uh, risk of uh, micro movements, which results in loosening of okay. the screw and later also in break breakage. And you probably risk or, yeah, you have risk of failure of the entire okay. implant abutment system. Yeah. So it's very very, very important to use the right torque and to use the right torque wrench. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I guess this this is a, a small picture you took from the IFU. Right, right. And and on the packaging, the uh, the torque applied is uh, is also mentioned and in, in all yeah. the uh, the catalogs and so on, because this is an important, uh, right. it's an important part of it. So, and that's the reason this, this slight elastic elongation, that's also the reason why to ensure the optimum pretension, you should always use new screws for the final insertion of the button in the dentist office. Yeah. Yeah, so you can use a screw for your lab, yeah. but if you hand it over to your dentist, he should ideally use a new screw. Fresh. Yeah. Okay. And that means screws that 
already experienced tension should not be used for final fastening. Okay. Yeah, and this also applies when when removing the restoration. Even it's just a a checkup or for cleaning uh, all two years or whatever, you should always use a new screw. Yeah, okay. yeah that makes sense. Yeah. And um, f from my experience, uh, also in the communication with a lot of dentists, you can say it's like when you change your tires, you have yeah. this, <laughs> this this label yeah. on your on your uh, steering wheel, yeah, that you should retighten. Yeah, your screws awesome. and it's probably a little bit the same here with the abutment screws so initially you put all the torque on your screw head yeah. just from the beginning and then it it distributes to all the threads yeah. right and that results in a that the, the the torque goes down a little bit so you should after a few minutes maybe also a day later just, just retighten with the same torque again and then finally close Okay. the screw channel and then you have the desired pretension and the correct right right okay that's a, that's a that's a good tip talking a little bit about the um the hexalubular screw so the hexalubular screw of course allows us to have this angulation of screw channel which is important for aesthetical reasons absolutely so on, yeah. right um and i think it's important to mention that the, the hexalubular design um is a a, a standard Yes, meaning that there's a, a lot of manufacturers that are also using this, uh, this this design, uh, and it simply is a, a a design that allows us to to have this angulation up to 28 degrees. On the driver side, uh, I know that we have slightly improved the driver uh, okay. in, in the in the dimensions um, that actually so we we can achieve a little higher torque mm -hmm. uh, on, on the driver, but. Uh, it's still a standard and is compatible with with basically all the hexalubular drivers. I think that's a, a healthy tip. Um, but I think now we we come to the the small revelation. Yes. Our small sneak peek. Uh, I've been quite eager to to actually show this, uh, and I'm also very eager to hear your thoughts on it. Um, but but basically now we have a concept of a new hybrid base where we will introduce a a colorable hybrid base mm -hmm. uh, and we'll also introduce uh, gentle heights uh, to this new version but there's also some some nice benefits to it that I know that you also are, are quite keen on yeah so um, as you said we have the straight cut options you are yeah. reducing the height from 7.5 to 5.5 to 3.5 yeah so you have less inventory or capital tied up yeah, yeah that's very important, I think, for a lab. Yeah, so you have the multiple gingival height options, as you said, uh, which is also important when we talk about bacteria colonization, yeah. having a subgingival cement gap, and all that. Um, and also, we have this nice concave contour, which ideally supports the gum. So the gum can really nestle in this yeah. concave contour, which gives you more gum thickness, and it really supports also the idea of platform switching oh, okay. because and with especially with conical systems you always have this let's say automatic platform switching yeah. in it that gives your bone your gingival more space yeah. and this also supports that that concept because the concave contour gives mm. also more space for the gingival and that's with the uh, the white and pink aesthetics you talked yes. about earlier yes yes usually it's the gingival is transparent so you you are you are really in need to have a to uh, to ensure the the best possible thickness of the, of the gum. Yeah, okay. uh, but the really um, game changer for me is this guide cut. Oh yeah, yeah. The guide cut. That, that's a nice feature, and I think I think we have actually a picture here illustrating it. Yes, and you you we talked about at the beginning of the webinar about the limitations for using a hybrid base. So even you would like to use a hybrid base in the yeah. frontal tooth area, you are not able to because of the chimney height and all that. And this angle cut gives you now a much better and also a better extension of the indication for hybrid bases. Ah, yeah. yeah. So it optimizes the minimum wall thickness. It supports your 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 crown, your bridge in a much better way. It increases the bonding surface, and in the end, it results in a better aesthetics and stability. Yeah, 
Absolutely. For, for me, it, it, we, I think we see a increased internal framework, uh, a, a higher structure, a better retention, uh, maximized. Um, for me, it, it it might be a little bold to say, but I think we are we we're, we're kind of bridging a little bit the gap between a, a, a hybrid based type A solution and and a customized department. We're kind of getting a little bit closer. Uh, to those two, right? Yes, right. So this is always the biggest pain point. Yeah, yeah. that the chimney and, chimney hide somewhere collides with your mock-up. Yeah. yeah, and in this way you can solve it perfectly. Yeah, and um, yeah. So what I did here, just I played around a little bit uh -huh. uh, with yeah. with what the same mock-up, with the same case, and I use a competitor um, a hybrid base on the left, and you see also here you have. To, different ginger whites, um, you have different uh, cuttable options yeah. in your chimney. But as you can see, to to ensure material wall thickness, to ensure aesthetics, you need to cut it straight. Yeah, yeah? you have just a straight cut options here. And I just cut it in the middle uh, of the hybrid base. You, maybe ideally you would cut the, the on the lowest level yeah, okay, but to the wall thickness, right? Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. You need, I think, for stability, you need a minimum wall thickness, but also for aesthetics. Yeah. If it falls down under one millimeter, it's sometimes different to cover mm. the titanium base as a ah. substructure. Okay. And what you see here, I think it's clearly in the middle uh, picture. I, I cut this base mm -hmm. virtually, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the right, the same mockup, the same model. I used the new mm -hmm. guided cut yeah. option and the hybrid base gen 4 and you re really see that it's really supporting um, your chrome yeah yeah and increase the bonding surface much better yeah. yeah yeah exactly the surface area is is vastly higher than uh, on, on the middle picture yes absolutely for me it's a really a game changer yeah. I would say yeah maybe, yeah it, very interesting very very happy about it we we have a short animation here that just well this is kind of standard right this is how you cut it? Uh, you can cut it on the on the horizontal plane, and you can cut it in these guide cut uh, right. regions. Um, what's interesting is that, of course, depending on the systems, uh, there'll be various tool heights. Mm -hmm. Here we're looking at the the EV platform. Here we have four tool heights, and they are one, two, three, and four. Um, but what's also important here is that they're also going to come as a non-engaging version. And the non-engaging version will have the same options for, for cut indications. So you also have the, the guide cut options of these uh, as well. Um, and then uh, what we have here is also the screws. Um, so what we say for this new the generation four is that the angulation with the hexalocal screw is now not up to 28 degrees, but it is actually 28 degrees. So by having a uh, a variation of screws that will be co-packed with it, mm -hmm. so you always get the right screw. Uh, you'll also be a version for the, the tall gingival heights mm -hmm. to have a, a hexalobal screw with a higher screw head, uh, meaning that we can actually access the screwdriver interface and achieve the 28 degrees angulation. And I think it's important to say, because you mentioned it before with the screw seat interface, right. that it is still the same screw seat interface yeah. uh, as always, it's just the head of the screw that's that's, that's in reference, this case yeah. is, uh, is, is change. Okay. So I really like this uh, this ability to actually obtain 28 degrees angulation. Absolutely. Those aesthetical cases yeah. that you have. Especially in the frontal tooth area, you almost have to angulate all the screw channels. Yeah. yeah. Because the hybrid based it, uh, implant follows the bone orientation. Mm. Yeah. And, and also, uh, I would just like to mention that uh, during the development, we, we we also discussed, well, do we actually need a, a jig or tool to cut it from? And we asked a lot of different people, uh, and some say, well, sometimes we buy the tool or the jig, um, but it's not always that we use it. Um, and, and for that, we actually decided on that we, what we will do is if we will make these downloadable STL oh, files okay. um, that will have the different cut indications on them. So you can actually just mill it if you have a bit of zirconia left, uh, they are not that big, um, that you can mill it and you can center it. Oh, that's a great, yeah. that's a great option. So if, if you want it, if you need it, it's available uh, and you can control it yourself, you can mill what you need. Okay. At no extra cost. But I think that's, that's a great tool. I think this is a good way to kind of, um, yeah. kind of handle that. Absolutely. Uh, and we also, 
looking at the features that we already talked about, um, we have a, a short overview and, and comparison where we kind of focus on the, uh, as you mentioned, the gingival height, but also the gingival shape, yes. which for you were important for the aesthetical reasons, or also the, the width uh, of the actual uh, hybrid base. Uh, and if we if you look at it uh, from a competitor, and I think you, you this is something that you can kind of can relate to. Yes, yes, right. So uh, especially with the small implant diameters, the apartment should ideally follow the yeah. implant diameter. Yeah, which gives you some limitations. Usually, let's say the the gum, the, the healing cap has more or less the same diameter like the implant. Okay. Yeah. So if you have if you have a higher uh, diameter of your abutment and you put it in the patient mouth, you really put pressure on the gum, you relocate the gum, which is not healthy, which is not mm -hmm. aesthetic. Yeah, so the, the aim is always to have a, the most uh, a the smallest diameter available yeah, okay. to solve your prosthetic case and uh, you superimpose these yep. uh, these uh, competitor uh, hyperbase with the new Gen 4, and we ideally see here that the diameter is much smaller, so it follows much more the implant diameter, yeah. especially when talk about all these 3.0, 3.6, oh, yeah. 3.3 diameters. Yeah. Um, so this is very good for for your for your pink white aesthetics we yeah. already mentioned, yeah, and you also see this nice concave contour. Yeah, where your gum can nestle in, where you support the gum thickness and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It really highlights this in in, in a good way. Um, but that was, of course, the the Gen Four uh, that will be a lot more on later. Um, but when we talk about high bases, bonding is a, also a essential part of it, right? Um, and and what we did here uh, a while ago is that we did a study uh, and we actually have this white paper which is published on our, on our, on our website. Um, but basically this is a study on on, on the bonding and, and how different parameters affect the bonding results. And that can be cement gap and surface preparation and then cleaning uh, and all these different aspects um, that might come quite natural in the lab, I would assume, mm -hmm. but it probably also you, you, you can end up in a situation where you're just doing what you always kind of done. Yes. Uh, and and when then the, the the product might change, then there can be new ways of handling and a new best practice. And the result of this white paper uh, is, is more or less listed here in the next couple of slides uh, broad. Uh, and, and, and to highlight the big do's and don't, mm -hmm. uh, then we say based on the study, so what to do is to either clean with uh, alcohol mm -hmm. uh, or a cleaning agent from the cement that you're using. Uh, a lot of them will actually have that now. Uh, and that's because we do not recommend to use a steam cleaner. Um, for what we saw on the study is that when you, you steam clean, it might look clean, mm -hmm. but it seems like you're not really removing like the residue of, of fat or, or something from, from handling it. It's not becoming actually really, really clean, uh, and that will impact your retention strength. Uh, and then we also say, well, uh, best practice is to blast with a 50 micron aluminum oxide on the zirconia, uh, because we say don't blast the hybrid base. Uh, and that I think is is, is the biggest point, uh, because yeah. that might be a little traditional. Yes, uh, I'm, well, at the beginning I was very surprised to hear that because yeah. when you when you uh, are trained as a dental technician, you learn to almost sandblast everything. Yeah, yeah, your framework, <laughs> your abutment, your cat, your dog, everything you yeah. you sandblast here. So uh, it was really surprising yeah. that you shouldn't sandblast yeah. it, and that's also the reason why we can go with this nice uh, gold color uh, um, feature. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and, and I think when it, when it comes to, to, to sandblasting, and I, I kind of understand the reasoning why, because if you had like a completely straight and smooth cylinder, it, it doesn't really look like you have any adhesive abilities on it. Yes. Uh, what we have here on, 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 uh, on our hybrid basis is that we have these helixes, retention helixes that I talked about before, and they actually 
they actually uh, give you a mechanical retention. Okay. So this is actually pictures from a study. This is not the EDOS hybrid base, but this is a similar uh, hybrid base solution um, that has the same kind of mechanical retention. And what we see on the left side is that we have the non-sandblasted version where you have these nice mechanical retention areas, sharp corners for the cement to really uh, uh, build up retention. And on the on the right side, you have the sandblasted surface where you kind of smoothen out all the mechanical retention and you're going more or less back to a smooth surface. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we say, well, it's really important not to blast the Elas Accurate hybrid basis because you're actually reducing the uh, retention. Okay, so you're rounding all these retention areas, all the, right? All the mechanical retention is, is more or less gone. And, and, and from the same study, and we can fully relate to it because we have the same, uh, the same features, on the same study, uh, they actually did it where they, they took a, a tie base and they blasted it uh, and then bonded it. And then they took one where they, they, they blasted and primed it and then no surface treatment and then primed. And you can actually see the difference in retention just on those four, uh, four different solutions. Yeah, I think that's, that's very nice because a lot of communication is based with bonding. It's based on best guess somewhere. Yeah, yeah. On, on very traditional experience, yeah, what you... but uh, what you highlight here is that it's with, with ELOS, it's based on scientific studies. Yeah. Yeah. So we just just highlight things we already uh, proved in a, in a study, right? Yes, exactly. And that's the nice point. It is. And, and this is actually the study that, uh, that all these pictures are from. And one of the other very essential things when we talk about uh, sand blasting is actually they can introduce micro fractures um, ah, okay. by blasting the, the, the titanium base in this case can actually have small micro fractures then over time you can actually end up with a fracture okay. of the type base so that's another really good reason for not blasting the Eagles Accurate uh, hybrid base oh very interesting yeah um, and all these studies that we've done over time has also amounted into these uh, a cement guide or bonding guides as we call them uh, and we have right now available on our website we have uh, our intro bonding guide and our plaster model bonding guide um, but one of the things that we, we, we kind of end up in the situation is well what do you actually do if you're not doing intro bonding uh, and you don't have a plaster model which yes. is probably in many yes. cases right right um, and and what what our recommendation is that well for sure do not use the 3D printed model as your bonding reference because the mill structure, as you know, is just so much more accurate in the manufacturing method than the 3D printing. Oh, so you used it as a chick somewhere. Yeah, okay. exactly. If you were bonding on, on a 3D printed model that didn't have the accuracy required for a passive fit, you could actually introduce a, a misfit in your already very precise mill structure. Okay, that makes sense. So the next study that we're actually doing and is ongoing right now is that we are doing what we call a, a in-bridge bonding. And I'll just highlight the steps that we're going to be going through. Uh, and I'm sure that you can recognize them because you're the expert in that. Um, but we will we will release this bonding guide once we, uh, once we have the scientific uh, material to support it. Okay. But as you also say in, in, in the other guides is that, well, we blast the inner geometry of the restoration, meaning the zirconia, mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we clean it with either uh, a cleaning agent or the alcohol, uh, and then we clean the, uh, the hybrid base with, again, either the cleaning agent or alcohol, uh, we block the screw access hole, uh, and then we apply primer both to the restoration and the hybrid base, uh, and then we apply the cement to the hybrid base. Okay. And actually only to the hybrid base, we see the best results with that. Uh, and then of course we, we, we mount it and then we apply the pressure. Um, and here we're using the mill structure and the mill reference uh, to actually obtain the accuracy. Uh, we remove the excesses of cement and then we like to according to the manufacturer's instructions. And then basically we can, we can test it by doing a, a, a Sheffield test I okay, see. and and here also comes this triple feature into play because it exactly. guided your zirconia and it ensures that always a circular cement gap in exactly. the right way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the tripods will exactly center your 
Harvey Base in the center of the reservation as is intended, which is why you can okay, actually use great. this procedure. Yeah. Um, but, but as mentioned, this is something that we will also publish once we have the scientific evidence to back it. So that will also come later. So that was the, the first tips and tricks, actually. And I think the next one is, is from you. Yes, you, you know, um, there's um, a new ExoCAD version available, which yeah. is called LFCNA. Yeah, the 3.2. Yeah. And uh, you can see, I just want to show uh, the initial structure of our library for the new hybrid base Gen 4 mm -hmm. and um, the, the advantages which comes out from this new design. And now you see in the selection menu, you have this three or four different gingerbread highs for this specific yeah. platform, which is the ATE, yeah. uh, Astra EV uh, yeah. platform. And then you have the different heights. So you have the straight cuts, which is 7.55 from 3.5, and you have the guided cut, large and small. Yeah. Yeah. I I uh, choose the the guided cut large mm -hmm. at this point. And now you can see you follow your normal design mm -hmm. process. So you mark the emergence profile. Yeah. So this is very common also yep. to, to all the other features and former versions of ExoCAD. Then for sure you have this automatical uh, placement of the library tools into mm -hmm. this, but uh, as a dental technician, you maybe not satisfied. So I mirrored the neighbor oh, tools okay. in this situation. It's ideal to mirror it and to place it the right way on it. Yeah, and then you need a little bit to to adjust it. Yeah, the right way. Um, oh, yeah. No, so you scale it a little bit to fill the gap. And no, I would say it's oh, perfect. It's really nice, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it's still not perfect. Oh, <laughs> as still you see, so I, yeah. Well, so you want to it. make it always perfect, even it's probably not uh, necessary here in this case. But now we are uh, going to the uh, to the uh, screw channel. Yeah, to the screw channel angulation. And uh, there's a feature in it, uh, which allows you to, um, to have a trackable uh, angulation of the screw channel. So you fade in the screw channel, and then you can just angulate it the best way you need for this specific case. Yeah, yeah? and in this case, I just choose the 24 uh, but degrees. But this is the new angulation from Exocat. Yes, yeah. so it was supported also in former version, but yeah. not in such a good way. No, it makes a really nice uh, angulation now, and the angulation point, which is what we're actually interested in. Yeah. Right, that was always the pain point. Yeah, with the angulation. and you actually see it here, yeah. how it perfectly goes into the the, the cutout in the in the hybrid base, and how it follows the direction of the, of the screw channel. Yes, you can see it here. So it really supports. It. We yeah. we made all these screenshots before and the pictures before. So again, here you see how it's ideally supported. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks really good. Okay, and uh, and you have more, I know. Yes, yes. So the other point is very nice. So sometimes if you receive a scan from a dentist, so the the dentist just put the scan body on top of the implant, yeah. but doesn't care about the direction of the flat surface of the scan body. Yeah, yeah. And this is always oriented to, oriented to the U-shaped feature, yeah. which gives you the direction of the screw channel. And sometimes it's not ideal. You want to have it on the oral side, or on the whatever side, yeah? So you place your, your tools and looking on the hybrid base. Yeah, so yeah. if you angulate it to the oral side, it uh, already yeah. rotates automatically. It's so beautiful. And it actually follows the perfect axis of the screw channel. Right. And you see, if you, you have, in this case, you have six options because yeah. you have a hex interface. Mm -hmm. And this is very nice now because before you had this option just after scan body matching. But before your you mock-up you of the tooth. tooth. No. Yes, you don't have the tooth. So. Okay, so you can actually skip it in the first step and just align and then go with your design and then do right. the angulation. Right, that's a big advantage now. Yeah, this is really, really good. Okay, okay, but let's uh, let's look at the next tips and trick. Yes, rem remind, uh, or remember the, um, the feature I said with the mating geometry that the, that the, um, the, 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 the cement gap is yeah. given. Yeah, and, and that's why we don't in the library, we only have our preset cement gap. 
uh, yes. which is 60 microns, because that's from our white paper. Our study shows the best yeah. retention. And you see here, you can still modify it in your cam. I, in this case, I use Jim's system. You see the cavity, which yeah. is generated by the mating surface. Exactly. And then you go, to my the double click, you go to this tool symbol and to the cavity symbol. And then you see this menu where you can adjust your cavity fit. Ah, so yeah. that can of course be according to machine performance or tools or yeah, own, so, own preference. So if you have a plus, it means it gets more tight. Okay. Yeah, and if you have, have a minus, it it's get more loose. Yeah, but okay. um, maybe you these are pre settings. Yeah, but you can also manipulate it and saying, oh, I, I want to have it more tight, and so it you get given, your own preference. Yes, you can you can uh, modify these uh, pre selections in the in the configuration menu of. In this case, gym system, and you see now you probably say, mm, I want 20 micron, not 30 micron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or instead of 10, I want to have 20 micron. Uh, uh, okay, so yeah. you can actually say, yeah. So you can change it. And then if you are going back the same with, with, the, with the minus, yeah, so you can really customize your fitting depending on your whole process chain in production of your preferred material, tool, mm -hmm. strategy, yeah. whatever. And now when you double click again, going to the tool symbol and the cavity symbol, you see that your new defined settings are available here. Yeah. yeah, the 20 micron, which makes it tighter, the fitting. Yeah, you can select it and now you have a, a perfect fit. And that's a, that's a really nice option. And, I, and I actually, I really like it because I believe that any adjustment like this should be handled on the cam right. and not in the design. We need to deliver the design with the predefined cement gap as it should be. And then on the on the milling machine side, on the manufacturing side, you can actually machine it so you can achieve it. Right. And not change it in the library. Absolutely. I, I, I really I really like I love this. I love this feature as well. Uh, but I guess this is not the only one that can actually no, do this. No, uh, usually in on uh, most of the common uh, cam softwares, you have this application. Okay. This for example, is the VHF Dental Cam software, mm -hmm. which also gives you this option to uh, modify your internal fit of the cavity. Yeah, so it's a little bit different process, but at the end, the result is the same. So you go to the settings, and then you can uh, define your machining parameters for your different blank types. So it's not overall for all your blanks. So no. you can re referring to a specific blank. You go to the cavity, to the abutment bridge um, area, and then you can define an oversize. Oh, okay. And in this case, minus me means it makes it more tight. That makes sense. Yeah. And plus <laughs> means it makes it more loose. Okay, but is yeah. this is this in in the X and Y plane, or also in, in the set axis? I'm kind of changing the entire no. surface, or is it? I think it should not change the no. height. It, so it should change the the X Y. Yeah. yeah. So you increase your salmon gap in the X Y. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, that's uh, some really nice tricks that you you found for us this time, Ralph. Uh, as always. And I think the the only thing left now is to say, well, thank you, and uh, thank you for joining and. Thank you, Ralph. It's been a pleasure as always. Thank you, Casper, for the nice words. <laughs> I uh, I learned a lot, so I really enjoyed. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, and we we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you, Casper and Ralph. Um, you're, you guys are great together, and that was a really enjoyable uh, lecture. Got a lot out of it. That's amazing the stuff that they show and how I, how simple they make it sound, especially with some of the. Uh, the the adjustments in the software and reach out to us uh, for all the ongoing promotions uh, in and around any of the ELOS products. And thanks again, guys, and we'll see you uh, at our next uh, webinar. All the best. Bye.